Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco and uh, thanks for coming in again. We've got another wine for you. Uh, we've got something that I'm pretty excited about. We've got a wine called uh, the Dulcis Moscato di Asti. This is uh, from the San Silvestro uh, Winery in uh, Italy. It's in the Piedmont region of Italy. Uh, get a little close up on there. Paid $9.98 at HEB Plus. Um, Moscato uh, di Asti is a, uh, is a grape varietal. Uh, actually, it's grown in a lot of places. The Moscato grape or the Muscat, Muscat, M-U-S-C-A-T grape, uh, is grown in almost 20 countries around the world. Um, this is the Moscato uh, Blanco, or Bianco, I'm sorry, Bianco um, grape. And... For this uh, producer, their grapes are, bro are grown in Asti and Cuneo, uh, the ten those areas of the Piedmont region. Piedmont region is kind of near France and Switzerland. Uh, Cuneo is actually really close to France if you look on the map. Uh, Asti is a little bit farther east of Cuneo, um, but they're in that region. Uh, and it's, Piedmont is far, you know, the Asti area is known for what's called sparkling wines. And there's a the light sparkling wines. Uh, they have a they call it frizzante, and you can't see it because uh, the bottle's pretty dark. But there's there's bubbles. I've opened this up a couple hours ago, and there's still bubbles going on. So it's a sparkling wine, uh, and it is 5.5 percent alcohol. Dude, I could drink the entire bottle, and barely get a buzz. But we're not going to do that today. Anyway, so um, other thing about sparkling wines. Well, let's just get into the wine first. I'll talk about all this stuff later. So you see that you got a bunch. It's kind of hard to see now, but you got a bunch of uh, had a bunch of bubbles there. This is not really the type of glass you want to be drinking, and then you want to drink it in a flute. That way, all the the bubbles come up and it looks all pretty. But um, I'm gonna use this, and you, you can see there's I don't know if you can tell, but you can see there's definitely some some bubbles there all over the place. Let's check this out. Very light, in a good way. You know, very light, very uh, spritzy. You get um, some citrus. You get some citrus notes, some sm some citrus smells. Clean. You know, very just very very refreshing, clean. Very nice. Which I have to admit, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad because I opened up this one and then this was yesterday's wine. I know, recording both today. Um, when I opened up both of those wines, at first opened up, I was kind of like, it was kind of stinky. You know, I mean, I smelled the cork, which, you know, okay, whatever. Smell the cork for, really just to see if the cork is bad. Because all you do is smell cork. Um, but you can see the cork busted when I pulled it out. So yeah, just really clean and, and citrusy. See how it tastes. Sure, I mean, but it's supposed to be, it's sweet wine. It's a sparkling type wine. It's not a fortified wine, because if it was fortified, it'd be a lot more than 5.5% alcohol. Yeah, I, it just, nice and sweet. Folks, this is, this is a really tasty juice. It's, it's, and you taste the sugar, and, you know, coats the mouth, not much acid, it's really, it, it's, it's not syrupy, but it doesn't have really any acid. So, I mean, I like having a little bit of acid on, on white wines, but this is a different type of wine, you don't really, well, I guess you shouldn't expect that. 
Um, I don't really drink many uh, Moscato di Asti. As a matter of fact, this might be the very first one I've had or that I remember having specifically. Because, I mean, I bought it specifically because it's Moscato di Asti. And that's what I wanted to try. Um, I guess like grapefruit. Grapefruit, that's what I'm getting. It, it took me a while to really identify the fruit, the citrus, best, but it's, it's kind of grapefruity. You put a bunch of sugar on the grapefruit like you have it in the morning, have it for breakfast. Speaking of breakfast, you know, and talk, I talked about yesterday about pairing food and wine. I don't really have to pair wine with food. But the only thing I haven't really paired any food and wine is it breakfast or specifically cereal because I I'm not an eggs guy I don't really like eggs so that pretty much cuts out about 80% of all breakfast I like cereal pancakes French toast waffles uh, and then all the meats and cheeses that are associated with breakfast but and like hash browns I like all that stuff I can see having this with some breakfast like maybe not with the c- cereal maybe somebody asked me on Twitter a long time ago about cereal combination. I replied back something like a sparkling wine. Um, and I even said something else about like, I don't know, I think I even said Pinot Noir or something stupid. I don't know. It was, it was I, at the time it was funny and it would take me forever to find that post on Twitter. It was on my Mars 8 account, not the 1337 wine. But um, yeah, this is really tasty and uh, I'm excited about having some more of that. Um, let me talk more about the wine here. And uh, let's see. So, uh, like I said, this is the Moscato Bianco, uh, and, and Muscat's grown in about 20, almost 20 countries. Now, what it is, is the, the grapes range from being like the traditional white grape to what, this, what was called almost black. So, so from white and red, they have both types of mus, Muscat, Muscat grapes. Um, this is 100% Moscato, okay, according to the website. I went to the website, and it's aged in stainless steel. So... You're not going to get any kind of oakiness. You're not going to get that that buttery, uh, creamy uh, characteristics of the oak. Is not going to impart that on there. It's all stainless steel. Yeah, definitely get that grapefruit, sugary, really, really sugary grapefruit. Um, maybe a little bit of pineapple, maybe a little pineapple on there too, but I'm going to go with more of the grapefruit than the pineapple. Um, but anyway, so yeah, this is a sparkling wine. So with all sparkling, I mean, this time a lot of carbonation, but I don't know if you can tell, we'll take the, the cork from the other wine. This is the cork from the yesterday's wine. This is the cork from today's wine. You can see that it really blew up. Like expanded, didn't blow up you know, literally, but there is no comparison. They were both the same size initially, but the, all the carbonation caused this this cork to really expand, and it came out like this. Okay, first of all, it didn't come out like that. It came out like this. When I pulled it out, it broke. It's the worst thing in the world to happen. Now, one thing you can do is what I did is I struggled with it, and I actually got the corkscrew and I grabbed that corkscrew and I. Kind of like gently, so you don't want to push it back in. I gently, um, you know, got the cork screw into it, and I was able to pull out the rest. The other thing you've done is just push it all the way down. It's just cork. Seriously, it's just cork. It's not going to kill the wine. I mean, it touches the wine already, so it's not going to kill if it touches it again. Especially if you're going to drink it pretty quick. So it's not that big of a deal. At least not for me. Maybe for the purist, and and some people they don't want that to happen, but. You know, it's no big deal. And if you're really worried about it, you could get a strainer and strain any little bits of cork out. So, um, but definitely recommend this. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're batting, batting a thousand so far with HEB Plus. We're three for three on wines. Uh, this one was not recommended. It wasn't like, okay, it wasn't like the person said, don't buy it. It was just, this was not a, a wine that somebody said, yeah, buy it. We, the first couple wines were wines that were like, hey, these are sleepers. You may want to look at them. And then I think the rest of the wines we bought are just wines I looked at and said, you know what, let's check this out. So um, definitely it's a good one. What else? Um, as always, the ads. Click the ads, make donations if you want. You know, starting to get a little pricey on the wines now, 10 bucks, you know. Um, we've got comments. 
the forums, start up some stuff there. Uh, go visit the forums. There's nothing there right now, so maybe you can be the first to post something. Uh, got lots of ads. Hopefully, they're, they're interesting ads uh, that you can click on. I mean, I think they're kind of interesting. I think they're kind of cool. Uh, of course, the donation thing. Friend me up on Twitter. Friend me up on Facebook. I uh, got my Facebook page name on Friday night for, uh, for both my pages, but for, for this one, I got the 1337 wine. So facebook.com slash 1337wine, I got that. Um, <clears throat> tell people on Twitter, you know, let them know, hey, you got this guy here. And if you're watching on iTunes, which I know there's a couple of you are, um, come by the webpage, 1337wine.com. You know, you can follow me on Twitter, you can send me an email, I got the email links, everything. So definitely want to communicate with everybody. I communicate with people on Twitter. Uh, I, did, I already did that earlier today. I uh, had some little little uh, conversations with people on Twitter about some stuff. So uh, friend me up, and we'll see everybody again next time. Oh, and today's show, uh, see, today's Tuesday. Okay, the show date's Tuesday. Sommelier A School, look for that. Episode 2, Lesson 2, let's put it that way, all about how you smell and taste wine, all the kind of like technical things about it. Um, might even taste some wine. I don't know, maybe bring this back out. When I actually record that on Tuesday, bring up both these wines and maybe do a little comparison of tasting and smelling. But uh, we've got that, Sommelier A School, only on the website in Vidler. That's it. Thanks for stopping in. We'll see everybody again next time. All right, folks. Uh, one thing I forgot, I didn't rate the wine. <laughs> Mom's drinking it. Um, <clears throat> what am I going to rate this wine? Uh, see, I already got the vacuum in on there, too. I'm already ready for that. Um, it's tasty. It's really sweet. I like it a lot. Uh, you know, I'm not going to go to 90 yet. I'm going to give it an 89, um, almost to a 90, just because the sugar really, um, really is seductive. And I don't want to really crack that 90 range. And it really isn't a 90 point wine or 90, or 90 range. I'll give it an 89, really for the sweetness of it. That's it. See everybody, guys. See, see all of you next time.